I'm Jared Quested. I'm from Baltic, South Dakota. So what we do on our farm, we uh, farm corn and soybeans and we have a small feed lot where we feed um, background cattle. We homesteaded uh, a few miles south of here in 1886 and we've been farming most of our land since then. I've been uh, part of the farm as long as I can remember, I guess, but when I came home from tech school in 2012, I had some different ideas of uh, how I wanted to do things. And we've been starting in no-till now on our third year on most pieces and excited to continue on with that. It's just one of those things that the more you do it, I think the more we'll see the benefit. You know, the first year we tried it on a couple pieces and just, uh, you know, went in and kind of tried to figure it out and had to adapt the planter a little bit that first year to do some things. and. The next year we decided to do just about all of it into no-till and we had to do a lot of adaptation to the planter to make everything kind of run through like we wanted it to. So, you know, once we got going, it, it was pretty simple. And then we found, you know, the amount of man hours it didn't take for, you know, running a tillage tractor all day or, you know, just all the fuel that we would have burned, you know, that way too. It, it just simplified our lives quite a bit to be able to do the no-till. The second year when I started telling people like, oh, I think, you know, we're just gonna go ahead and leave the disc unhooked and just go ahead and plant fields. And that's when guys were like, are you sure you wanna do that? You know, how much yield do you think you're gonna give up? And you know, a lot of these questions come around and, and my basic answer was, well, I don't really know, but I'm pretty certain this is gonna be the right way to go just because there's a lot of good history around the area of the people that are doing it that seem to be quite successful. We got hills and you know valleys and all th things like that. Probably that's part of the reason when I started really seeing the benefit was I think it was two or three years ago we had a really heavy rain and we just got done tilling and we had all kinds of washouts and you know all kinds of erosion. And it's like that takes forever to get that back to where it should be. So right after that is like we got to do something different. So now we've stopped disking all these low spots, you know, that are highly erodible. You know, the low spots aren't so bad, but going up into the hills and such like that, you know, we just leave that alone. We can just farm through them rather than having to till them up and have all the washing happen again. You see that these fields that are all tilled up and everything, I mean, there's just no structure to the soil anymore. It, it's just completely just falls apart. So when we get those big washing rains, we can see why that happens. Whereas these fields with higher organic matter and better soil structure from the no-till, when you get heavy rains, rather than it washing away, it catches more through the organic matter and then it'll go down into the soil where we actually need it. Since we do have the feedlot, we had a lot of manure that we were disking in yet, because that seemed to be the only way to do it, but it's kind of one of those things that you learn to do the application a little bit different, and you might be able to have some different success with no-till with that. So this year we have right about a hundred and some acres that we're going to have manure spread over lightly, and then we're going to no-till right into that. With the no-till situation, I think the benefit is to the towns that are downstream is that maybe more of our nutrients that they're afraid are getting into streams are being absorbed into the soil and being used by crops rather than being washed away, which makes it more economical for us because then all that money we spend on fertilizer is where we put it, not washing down somewhere else. And so I think there's benefit to just about everybody by using no-till. You know, after you spend a little time getting adjusted, I think all that yield that you might lose the first couple of years will come right back to you. You're gonna save money on the fuel, you're gonna save money with the fertilizer because that's staying where you put it. And through all these different practices, I mean, you're probably saving quite a bit of money, but then long run, you're gaining yield because you're increasing the, the value of the land. Once you get all the good things going, you still gotta preserve the land. And if you preserve the land, that's going to help you produce more than anything. So generations to come, you know, hopefully our land is worth more than it was now when I'm starting. I guess to encourage other producers to try it, I mean, you just got to get out there and start doing it and put the disc away and just realize the amount of time you're going to save and the amount of labor you're going to save. But then in a couple of years, when you start seeing that soil structure change, then you're gonna really be happy you did. So, I mean, there's no reason to wait any longer.